I'd like to call the order of the planning board meeting for October 5th, 2021. My name is Carrie Barnack. I'm the planning board chair. Before we get started, I would like to read a few different announcements. This open meeting of the planning board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of June 16th, 2021 and act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. All members of the planning board are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows the planning board to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northboro Remote Meetings on YouTube via the link listed on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Um, now, members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Amy Pretzky? Here. Anthony Zayton? Here. Michelle Gillespie? Here. And Millie Milton? Here. Uh, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Kathy Jubert. Here. Okay, for ground rules. Um, we don't have any hearings tonight. Um, I'll just quickly cover. Chair will invite each speaker on the agenda by name to make a presentation. Participants will provide their full name and hold till they're called. Each speaker will mute their phone, phone or not speaking. Those responding. We'll be asked to wait until the floor is yielded to them. Speakers who wish to respond to comments of others do so through the chair. Each vote is taken by the board. I'm sorry, each vote taken by the board will be conducted by a roll call vote. And that looks like that covers everything for tonight. So why don't we get started with the agenda? As I mentioned this evening, um, we do not have any public hearings. So we will get down to business with old new business, starting with consideration of the minutes. Did everyone have a chance to read the minutes from September 7th? I did. Okay, yep. any amendments for the minutes from the 7th? I did not have any. Okay, no other. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the September 7th minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes for September 7th, 2021. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Millie? Aye. And carries an aye. Next, we have the minutes from September 21st. Are there any amendments to the minutes from September 21st? No. Okay, I actually, oh, sorry. There was one suggestion from me um, down in the, I'm just gonna bring my screen up here. Can everybody see the minutes here? Yeah. Um, this was the motion just to go into executive session and we had quite a bit declared <laughs> in here. I wondered if it would just be easier to copy and paste the exact bullets from the agenda and put them in here. Um, I mean, I guess it's just kind of all slumped together. I wasn't sure if that would be easier and more clear that the reasons we went into executive session or if it even matters. Does anyone think it matters or worth copying and pasting as it was written in the agenda? I read it from the agenda. Any thoughts? Does it matter? I think you should just keep it the way it is. It just talks about the litigation. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't a big concern. I just wanted to make sure I was actually um it seemed to be correct it looks as okay. long as it matches like i didn't actually read the two of them because i just thought it matched so i didn't compare but if you think it matches yeah let me take a quick look i do want to make sure it matches um Are you questioning whether it matches what was said? I, I just want to make sure that we, so it was very um, specific. They were the exact um, reasons written from the agenda. There were those three paragraphs in the agenda and I, yeah. I kind of read through them. So that might've been difficult if Melanie was trying to follow or maybe she went back and looked at the agenda. Um, so I just want to, oh, go ahead, Kathy. No, I was just gonna say, I think I, I, you don't have to do that detail. I, I don't think, Carrie, because I um, A, I think Melanie just, um, you know, cut and pasted it from the agenda and just put oh, it in. Oh, she did. Okay. 
but but you know i'll just i can just double check that um tomorrow okay um, great then we don't have to go and check no. all right there are just a lot of numbers read and i just want to make sure like the case numbers are the same and all of that i didn't go back and look so we just make sure okay so pending that um i have nothing else unless anybody else does okay is there a motion to accept the minutes from september 21st I make a motion to accept the minutes from September 21st, 2021. Second. All right, all in favor, Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Millie? Aye. And carries an aye. Okay, great. Next we have um, the rules and regs. We are talking about um, modifying the days required for an app between when everything's submitted for an application and the, the hearing. Kathy, I don't know if you heard anything from your group of experts on things other, what other boards are doing or any insight into that? Uh, sure. Um, uh, yes, I did. Um, I've, I've heard from several um, of the planners in various communities, and I went back and um, you know called a, a few of them just to verify the, how their process worked. And um, for the most part, everyone that I did hear, the towns that I did hear from, um, it, they either have it, 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 it's either just a verbal understanding, you know, they, the if staff and the board just, you know, repeats it every time an applicant comes in and says, you know, where the board's preference is to have, you know, material, you know, pick the time, whether it's a week ahead, two weeks ahead. I don't think anyone had more than a week ahead of time. Um, one of the communities um, had it uh, written onto their application, which is, easy enough to do um, if you want to do something like that. We have, actually, it's not so much the, the physical application, but we have a cover sheet that is written for the planning board and for the zoning board of appeals. And that goes to every applicant um, when they are, you know, contemplating uh, filing for the, for, for whatever it is for the town. So we could add something to that. Um, I asked the towns, I asked all the towns that I had contacted whether there was anything um, punitive that they, that the board did to the applicant, you know, whether they, um, if the material didn't come in in time, did the board just automatically say, you know, okay, well, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not going to hear you at, at the next meeting. Um, and, and nobody did that. One of the towns tried to do that, but it kind of not backfired on them, but it just, it just didn't work. Um, and it, and it came across as negative as opposed to, you know, okay, let's, you know, try to work through this cooperatively. So, so I would think that if, if it's something that, you know, this board wants to add that they want material, you know, X amount of days ahead of time, um, that we can put that into our, once you determine what that is, we can put that onto our um, instructional sheets that we give out to people. And then I think, de I think depending on what the material is and if you didn't receive it, um, I think you could then make a determination as to whether or not, you know, right there at the meeting as to whether or not you would need to continue the hearing. You know, if it was if it was something obviously very significant that you were looking for from the applicant, or you know, a set of revised site plans, or um, uh, you know, an updated traffic report or something, and you didn't have that information, then you know that's that's reason enough to just say you there's you, you don't have anything new to discuss tonight, so you're not going to you know have the hearing and any interaction until you receive that material, um, and then and then other times. Um, people had said that uh, some of the planners had said, you know, if it was something that, not that it was insignificant, but if it was something that, th that the board still did need, but they could go on with the hearing, then they would go on with the hearing and, and then, you know, continue it to the next meeting. Um, again, waiting for that information. So um, some of them found it effective, you know, to have it written on there. Um, uh, most found it effective to have it written on their, um, uh, you know, the application materials. And I think one of the towns, I can't remember which one it was, but um, one of the towns I think did put something into their actual rules and regulations saying that, you know, the material had to be in by such and such a, you know, again, whatever it was, seven days, you know, five days before the meeting. 
Okay, great. Any thoughts from the board on that? I think that makes sense to have it written on the application materials just to give everybody sort of that same time frame to work within. I agree. I agree. And I don't think that should be punitive either. So no. just writing it on there as a reminder, I don't think there should be any penalties. <clears throat> Anthony, any thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I said I agree with that, with what Millie said. Um, does it belong in the rules and regs or just the application? I mean, it doesn't even hurt to put in the rules and regulations. How hard is it? Because we just vote to put it in, right? But definitely the application is the most important because they probably don't read our rules and regulations. Right. I, yeah, I was just going to make that point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, we we hope and we encourage them to read the rules and regulations and um, but obviously the uh, they certainly read the application materials more readily than the rules and regulations and um, and as staff whether it's myself or or other staff members you know will point out to applicants that they need to read the rules and regulations especially <laughs> when it comes to site plans um, but I, I think it would be much more um, effective and, and eye-catching that it would be in the application materials. And, um, you know, if, if you just want to, you know, tonight, you know, pick whether it's five days, seven days, three days, wh whatever it is um, that we want people to abide by, um, including staff. I think you, you had talked about staff on that. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it would just be, you know, general saying that materials need to be provided by, you know, such, you know, so many days in advance of the, of the hearing. Okay, so for someone like Fred, who typically needs time to also respond to those materials, is there like that time frame we should work with as a starting point or do you just want us to throw out dates? I mean, uh, well, whatever it is that, that you're looking for. So if it's, um, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, a lot of times people, you know, your meetings are on Tuesday nights. So a lot of times, um, you know, and it's, it's sort of just the pattern that, that everyone has gotten into, you know, applicants are, are bringing in, you know, additional material on, you know, a Thursday or a Friday. So, which means that staff really, especially if it's coming in on a Friday, you know, staff's not looking at it until Monday. So, mm -hmm. um, so if you, you know, if you want to incorporate or, or um, you know, add in some time there for staff to be looking, you know, it, to have a chance to review it and respond, um, you know, and it's, and again, it's not going to be a perfect system, but, um, you know, I would think you'd, you know, want to be looking at maybe like seven days in mm -hmm. advance of the meeting. Okay. Any thoughts on that for timing? Sounds good to me. I, I, I would agree. I don't think that's unreasonable. Okay. Michelle, do you feel that way as well? No, I think that's good. I was suggesting three business days, which takes you up to Wednesday, which is just six days, you know, prior, but seven is the same. So, and Anthony, you as well? Yeah, I, I am for seven. Okay. And for me, I don't want it to be punitive, like using it as a way to not have someone have a chance to be heard, but I would like it to be there in the event that it's something significant where we need to be able to say, well, all right, we really need this information to make a decision here, so we'll have to hold. I, I don't think it's meant to. I just remember we had a, a time period where all you know all these things are coming in, and sometimes it's the same day, and we have multiple hearings, yeah. and staff yeah. is going crazy, and we're going crazy, and it's just so hard to come with a straight head. Yeah. To, no, you know. I agree. <laughs> so we'll start. You know, we'll start with seven days. We'll we'll work over the next couple of weeks of just adjusting, um, uh, you know, just amending the the um, packet. Um, maybe, you know, underline it, put it in red, but, you know, so that people notice that it's something new um, and then we'll go from there. And if it's, if it doesn't work or we find out that we need more time or less time, then we can adjust. Okay. That sounds good. Any other thoughts on that? All right. Uh, Master Plan Implementation Committee, any new, any updates for that one? We did meet again. So we met last Thursday. And um, 
Kathy couldn't get in, unfortunately. I think there were network problems all last week at the town. So, but we still met for like an hour and a half and I thought it was a great discussion. Did you, Millie? Yeah, I did. Yeah, so we talked about recommendations and we're gonna get an updated recommendation list from Kathy. And we also talked about a mission statement. Mm -hmm. But I think it was a great group of people. I mm -hmm. thought we had a great discussion. And, but I think we meet again um, October 21st. Yeah. And we'll have a new recommendation. Nice. There was one thing though I watched last night, and I, it might be too big for us, but I'll think about it, is um, last night open space actually went through all their recommendations and because one of our homework assignments was to go through our recommendations and see what we've already done um what might be short term that the planning board actually could get done and to give the master plan implementation an update at our next meeting and i watched open space last night and i noticed that they did go through the checklist mm -hmm. so i was thinking maybe next meeting we might want to think about doing that i could just open up the implementation page and um go through all the recommendations that have planning board in them see if oh, there are any that, that we can check off hmm? i said that's a great idea okay so how that happened was that when the open space committee met last night everyone received ahead of time the open Sp space committee members the master plan implementation highlighted in what was the objective for the open space and trails. And then um, they went through it just to review that they were on task for their um, plans. If you remember the way the master plan is written, there's an ongoing, and then there's, um, sometimes there's an immediate, but then there is um, med uh, a medium, you know, which is a five to seven year out, and then there's long-term which I explained to the, um, for those not familiar with the master plan, so that nobody goes out to the public and thinks this is happening tomorrow, that it's all like um, scheduled out in years. You know, mm -hmm. it could be a five to seven year plan because of the cost that's involved, it could be a long-term plan. So that's what the master plan worked on over the course of, I think it was a year and a half. And so certainly I think the board members should go back and look at what the planning board was given as appointments for, and for Millie, you'd probably go back as the historical society, wanna work with Norm on that. Yep. Right. And then you make sure that you're sort of on your checklist. And I guess you could always go back and say, you know, we see something that's, you know, down on the five to seven, maybe needs to go up, accelerate it up a little bit higher. I mean, that could be, you know, a discussion you could have with. Mm -hmm. implementation committee so that's how we did it so i can make sure um uh you know prior to the next meeting that um you, i mean there's, there's the link to the master plan obviously on the the planning's web you know planning department's web page um but um i can pull out the uh chapter the implementation chapter for all of you and um just in-house we can go through and highlight what is associated with the planning board and then you know get that to you prior to your next meeting oh great okay thanks all right um let's see before we get into bylaws do we want to go over that a and r kathy sure um let me Okay, can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an ANR that came in for uh, property on Lincoln Street. I believe it's 30, 31 and 35 Lincoln Street. So this is, um, uh, there's an existing house and a, a garage. It's an oversized lot. So um, what, you know, it's just the engineer dropped it off. Uh, they're proposing to, uh, you know, subdivide the property into two lots. Uh, and this has an existing, uh, excuse me, th there's a note here because it crosses the line that that will be taken down. So in this house, this existing house, um, you know, they created the lot line so that it meets all the setbacks. 
And then, you know, I would anticipate that this will be for sale at some point. So that's all it is, is just a very straightforward taking an oversized lot and, and creating two lots out of it. Okay, any questions? Is it, so I actually can't see what's written in the building, even with glasses. Oh, let me is see. Um, <laughs> that's well, okay. they, I mean, typically what, um, you know, if there's an existing structure on the oh, property, okay, I see. you know, they, they will just make a note to say that it's coming down. So therefore there's no zoning violation. And if someone were to submit a plan and say this barn or shit, I, I don't know what it is, garage, um, existed and they didn't have a note on that, we would send it back and say, you know, you need to put a note on it saying that that is going to be removed. Okay, but so my question is, is that note all of this required? It doesn't have to be written into any other documentation? It's just oh, a... Right, uh, just on the plan. Okay. That's all that's necessary. Okay. Any other questions on this? No. Thanks for explaining, because I was trying to <laughs> zoom in too, just to read it. Oh, I can zoom in more too, if you, if you need me to. Oh, I can see it now. I can see it, I can see okay. it now too. Yeah. Um, well, with my eyesight, I have to be on top of it, but um, <laughs> so I can always make it bigger. But um, so Carrie or, or anybody who's ever available, you know, if you um, want to stop by, you know, at some point this week, we'll have it out on the counter um, okay. for you to sign. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the A&R for what's the address here? 30 Lincoln Street? Um, th I think he's got 35. Okay. So motion to approve the a &R for 35 Lincoln Street. I move. Second. 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 Okay, all in favor, Millie? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Amy? Aye. Michelle? Aye. And carries an aye. Okay, that's it for a &Rs, Kathy? Uh, yes, there, there was only one. Okay, any subcommittee updates to cover? Nothing yet. Okay. All right. So then why don't we get back to our bylaws discussion? Um, since we last met, I know um, at our last meeting, we didn't, we didn't have much time to dedicate, it, dedicate to it. So we talked about just um, distributing materials um, before this meeting. Amy, you distributed several different items. I, I don't know if everyone had a chance to look at it, but do you want to start with those particular pieces that you sent to everybody and go through that a little bit? Or I don't want to put you on the sure. spot. Sure. Um, we can bring up brewery. I don't know if, let me check to see if I have it. I don't know if anyone has it. Uh, yep, I have um, a whole bunch brought up. Yep. Let me just see. Since that was one that we talked about last year, might as well start there. Okay. All right, do you want me to share my screen or are you bring some? Sure. Uh, you can if you want. Okay. Lose some screens. All right, here we go. Is everyone looking at craft brewery now? Mm hmm. Okay, so what I did was I sent out the craft brewery and underneath this, there's a couple of definitions from different towns, whether it be Grafton, Shrewsbury, but this first one from Shrewsbury right below seemed like a definition that seemed pretty basic, but also held it to a capacity of not more than 15,000 barrels. Uh, I'm not sure what people think if we want to start small or if you just want to do a brewery that doesn't have any capacity limit or if people don't want to do breweries at all. But I know there were questions about the amount of water it would take and the traffic. So if we kept it to a small brewery because we're not a huge town, I didn't know if that would sit well with people. I don't know if people had a chance to read all the material I sent out, but I just picked a couple different towns and a lot of them use similar definitions. Okay. 
So that one too says microbrewery. It has the same thing with 15,000 barrels. Hmm. I'm guessing that, um, and I haven't done any research on this, you know, uh, uh, until we, until, you know, I, I, I get some um, more direction as far as, you know, what you want to pursue for town meeting. But, um, you know, same as last year and, and this year, I'm assuming that that 15,000 is, is somewhere either in, um, uh, you know, um, some state regulation um, about this type of use because just about every town uses that 15,000. So um, I, I don't know what, in fact, it, it kicks it, that, you know, if it's, if it stays under 15,000 or if it goes over, does something else happen if it goes over? Um, you know, are different things needed from the state? I don't know at this point. Okay. Could you go back up to it, Carrie? Yeah, sure. And someone Shrewsbury just started, and um, it also adds in that uh, it includes a tap room and also a restaurant where you could serve some food and outdoor dining. So it seemed like it covered it all. So if it's somewhere we want to start, maybe Kathy, you can look into it and see if you think or if staff thinks that's something that would fit in Northboro. What, what are the notes? Um, you included notes below as it relates to Northboro. Did you want to speak to that at all? The, um... Um, I, those are from last year. That's what Bob said we would have to do today if we wanted a craft brewery by use variance on like groundwater three okay. that we would need to get I haven't read it recently, but special permit site plan review, use variance. Those are just the steps you'd have to do if someone wanted to come to Northboro today and do it. Uh, okay. So I think it's just easier to add a definition in our definitions and then add it in the use table where we think it would fit best. Shrewsbury up above was actually putting that in their downtown their village district, but we could just have it say there's bigger lots on Business West or industrial. I don't know. We can talk about it as a board. Where mm -hmm. would you picture it? Okay, so let me ask the board. Are we at a point where we want to take these bylaws and decide do they go to the next level? Uh, or maybe we decide, you know, not, not interested, interested in the next level or needs more research? Or do we want to continue to dive into each one? I just want to figure out from the board at what point do we want to narrow? Any thoughts on that? I wonder if we do it by law by by law, or it's up to you. I feel like the brewery one we we talked about a lot last year. So I think it's if Kathy has to do some research, we should move it forward if people are interested. I think people were interested last year. But there are other bylaws that we haven't really talked about as much that maybe we need more information. Yeah. Okay. Is that a fair statement for the board? Do we want to start to, to whatever extent we can start to pass some through as going to the next phase? Are we ready to make some of those statements or not? I, I, I think so. Um, I'd be interested. I don't know if anybody knows what exactly a 15,000 is a 15,000 barrel. What that means. You know, we, are there any examples of what that would look like? There's plenty of breweries around here. If there could be some examples. So I, I, does it, I hear like a noise when you speak, Anthony. Do you guys hear that as well? Yes. Do you hear that, Anthony? Maybe um, to answer that question, either like one of us, or like I could call or Kathy could call, like, like Cold Harbor is really small and it's in Westboro could ask what how many barrels they brew a year mm -hmm. or like Medusa's in downtown Hudson like how many barrels do they produce a year just to get an idea of what 15,000 barrels is because those seem like they fit in their downtowns or in a small area whereas if you go into Boston and look at Harpoon like that's huge okay all right. Okay, so, so is, is okay. this any better, by the way? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, so so my, some examples would be like Medusa or Cold Harbor, and just to find out what an equivalent would be to, the, to that. 
Do you want to do that, Kathy, or do you want me to call them, or? Uh, no, I, what, what I, I, no, I, I mean, I can easily do that, but um, just, you know, f further define this as, as we're talking tonight, you know, we're, we're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at, or what I'm sensing, you're looking at a small scale because you want this in possibly the downtown um, area and the at the last year you also talked about um you know including this in the industrial district um for you know on a much larger scale where where it would primarily be more you know of a of a facility that's manufacturing this and not so much that they've got a pub associated with them so those are the two things you still want to go forward with or um, and again, you know, this, as you were saying, Carrie, this can develop over the next couple of months. Um, but I can certainly um, call around to the communities that I know that not only have the bylaw, but have the, the actual, you know, brewery in their town um, and get the ins and outs of that. Right, because maybe even like a brewery the size of Medusa might even buy a parcel in the industrial because they want a bigger space to have like outdoor tables and outdoor dining and you just never know but i guess it would be good to get an idea of what how many barrels a year and what's that one in framingham how many barrels they have because they're probably uh, a little bigger john harvard or i mean there's i think there's several in framingham jack abby's is that what you're thinking of jack abby's yeah yeah because they're more of in a warehouse mm. so maybe if someone could compare or kathy like jack abby's versus a medusa or a cold harbor mm. i think this requires in-person research <laughs> 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 me too mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, but Kathy, are you hoping that we narrow down the types we're looking at, like a brew yeah. pub versus a? No, I mean, I think I think I, you know I have enough just to start to do some. Um, I mean, again, Amy's you know put together some of these bylaws. Um, I just want to talk to the communities, you know, about the you know ins and outs of their bylaw. Um, it, it, you know, is it working successfully? Um, traffic is always a concern, so. Um, you know, are, are they just using, um, you know, restaurant, their guidelines for, or their regulations for restaurant parking, you know, that type of thing. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a heavy, you know, it's not a heavy lift. And there was something with the Board of Selectmen also needs some sort of license in this equation. Wasn't there something else for the Board of Selectmen? Well, yeah, there would always be um, the Selectmen involved because they're the ones who issue the liquor license. So um, we want to make, well, I mean, at least want to investigate whether, um, you know, if we're, if we're adding a, a new use or new way to serve um, alcohol, does the, does the town um, receive, you know, additional licenses from the state or is it all just part of, you know, what, what we have available? Um, because I don't think there's anything available right now, but I can double check that with the board you know, Board of Selectmen, because there's pouring licenses and then um, like, like um, I'm dating myself with package stores, you know, actual just liquor stores um, where and versus the pouring, which is at a, you know, a restaurant. So, so I just don't know how that fits in, but I mean, but, but certainly, you know, the Selectmen would be involved um, because they're the ones who do the licensing with the Alcoholic Beverage uh, Commission. Okay, here's what it was we talked about before, the farmer series pouring license. There was some sort of like weird different license that was associated with these for some reason. I, maybe I, I'm not remembering properly, but I thought it was something where it doesn't come out of our regular count of liquor licenses. There's some sort of like different licenses. So I don't remember for sure, but I could have sworn that was some sort of discussion topic. Yeah, well, I, so I'll just, I'll verify that, Carrie. Okay. Uh, just so that we know what the you know the whole picture is here okay okay does it sound like the board is interested before kathy moves and does all that research is it um 
something the board is interested in this bylaw this year, at least pushing forward to the next phase anyway? Mm -hmm. Any yeah. Yes. All right. All right, it sounds like a majority is in favor. So we will push this one forward. Okay. Did you want to speak to another one, Amy, or do you want to? So just for a little comparison, I'm seeing that Medusa produces right now 1,500 barrels a year, but they're looking to expand their space in Holliston. Hmm. And they say they're at capacity at in their space in Hudson at 1,500 barrels a year. 1,500 or 15,000? 15, 1,500. Oh, okay. And so this bylaw, these bylaws had 15,000. A few, yeah. Were you seeing oh. that, Billy? Uh, I have it under Hudson Medusa Brewing Inks a deal with Holliston Distributor. That is from, it's a, a news um, from November, 2019. It might be a little outdated then. Hmm. Okay. Just to get a comparison of size. Okay. Um, the other one I have up, Amy, is the um, commercial development overlay district. We had talked about adding commercial uses to industrial. Did you want to speak? Do you want me to share this? And do you sure. want to speak? To this one? Okay. Okay. Can everybody see the major commercial de development overlay district doc? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I um I just did that yesterday and sent it out yesterday because we've talked. I think we talked last year. We talked this year. Um, there were a lot of you know we talked about are there any uses that could be allowed in industrial because our industrial list is so small and um some there are sometimes complaints about certain industrial uses so we thought well what's a better use that maybe we could add to the industrial so then applicants would come in and have a better selection mm -hmm. and um so i just went in and i used the um overlay that we already have and i tried to change it to make it into a commercial overlay for the other zones but it was just really an overall idea of what we could do because there's two ways to do it. You could also just add certain uses in by just going to the use table and updating that. Maybe that's better than an overlay or maybe this overlay is only good on like Barefoot Road and not all the different industrial zones. It was just an idea that there are two ways of doing it. And maybe the board has a feeling that they don't want to add commercial uses in industrial. I guess I just wanted to see, we've talked about it a little bit, so I just kind of kick-started it. But I didn't know if what board members think, and then maybe we should even open it up to the public in a meeting to see what the public thinks, whether it's the neighbors or what do they think? Do they feel that commercial uses would be welcome in their area of town or or not at all. I guess it was just, I was just trying to start. Okay. What, um, if something's highlighted, is that um, because you added it or you wanted to flag it? Yes, I highlighted what I added to the overlay. Like I crossed out commercial recreation indoor because we added that at last year's town meeting. Okay. And I added in assisted living facility because it wasn't on the list, but I thought maybe that would be a use in the commercial that would bring in and the industrial that would bring in extra revenue and, and fit, but maybe it wouldn't fit. Okay. All right. Any board thoughts on this? Yeah, I'd be curious to find out maybe from financial boards. I don't understand that statement that Amy made because usually your industrial land brings in more financial stuff than revenue than uh, uh, commercial does like a restaurant. So you'd always wanna see when you're making such a significant impact, what impact it would have on your financial well-being. So 
Um, I, I think that you could just go and add them. I don't know why you have to do an overlay. I actually don't even know why the planning board would want to do it when you have an implementation committee that's working on. Um, and I'm not, I, I get, you know, the public will come and, and give input to this, but you also, Amy, want to bring in other boards and committees that have always worked along years alongside of us when we do overlays. So, you know, I think you, you sort of maybe want to look at are there other industrial uses that are not included in our industrial use table? Um, and then look at, you know, it just seems pretty limiting. I cannot see a deli shop at the, the value of industrial land ever opening up down there, but maybe if you had some sort of mixed use, but. Um, I just took the other overlay as a, as an example. What other overlay? Um, this is the major commercial overlay where Wegmans is. But that was designed specifically for Wegmans. Right, that's why. So, they, I took so are this you suggesting one. like another Wegmans Mall should be up on Bartlett Street? No, this was just to get an idea of an overlay and to bring it out to the board. In my email, it said if we wanted to add commercial uses to an industrial zone, we could either do it through an overlay or through updating the use table. So this was just an example. It wasn't, I just yeah, wanted just to bring it up for conversation today. Yeah, I think you want to be pretty clear with the public that the commercial overlay at Wegmans was specifically designed for that shopping mall. And unless you're suggesting that you want another shopping mall the size of Wegmans to be over on Bartlett Street, that's why that overlay was designed that way. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you were on the board at the time. No, I wasn't. That's why I was just, it was an idea, but it, I didn't say that we had to do it. Okay. And this okay. when I read through the um, overlay, it just talks about uses to add. And then in the second part by special permit is where you could add more than one use. But the very top was permitted and it was like one item. But that's okay. Like this is a board discussion. If if it's probably easier to just add them by the use table, and then I totally agree. This okay. was just sent out as an idea because we had talked about it. Other thoughts on adding commercial uses, either if that's done or how that's done? I, th I think I would be more in line with adding it as uses rather than an overlay because I think an overlay may have a much different impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree. <clears throat> I would like to continue to pursue this. I would be interested to understand the differences in what square foot an industrial brings in in tax revenue as opposed to, say, a restaurant or a hotel. I don't know if we can, if that's something we can figure out. That is, that is a good way to look at it for like 60,000 square feet of property if you put the different things. But the hard thing is with industrial, I think a hotel would bring in a lot more revenue than like a contractor yard. Like they're all so different. And I also think um, a business office park would bring in more than a warehouse. But maybe there is a way to get what the tax revenue is if you built a 100,000 square foot office park versus warehouse versus I don't know. I don't know if that's too much to ask. So, Kathy, question about the overlay component. Um, and I really don't have a strong feeling either way, which way we would go. But is the purpose of the overlay to then get something in return? Or what, what would be an instance where it would make an overlay would be bring some sort of benefit that adding to the use table would not? Well, sometimes you want to use um, an overlay as a way you, you want to you want to maintain what the what the original zoning is. So mm -hmm. you um, let's just let's just use this as an example, um, and, and and I'll give you some thoughts I have on it after this. But um, um, you using the southwest corridor, okay. Um, what you have is a lot of land that is still zoned industrial there, so. 
um, if you wanted to say, if you wanted to maintain that, yeah, we, we want to have a mix there. We want it to be, you know, commercial and industrial, which I don't necessarily know is such a great idea because they're so, they're, it's such different um, markets and tenants and traffic and customers um, because you're, you're mixing you know, something that is um, uh, customer friendly versus something that is a, um, a warehouse or, a, or an R&D facility where, you know, um, a, a lot of activity is happening there during the day, you know, a nine to five type of thing. Um, and then people that live around it love the fact that, you know, it's, it's done when, you know, five o'clock comes and it's not there on Saturday and Sunday or the, or the, um, uh, you know, the, the um, side effects sort of, of, of a, uh, you know, a, a something that's opened, you know, seven days a week. Whereas with commercial, you know, property, um, and there's all sorts of commercial property. I mean, there's anything from, you know, something that's very small, uh, you know, a, a restaurant use um, all the way up to as you were, you know, someone was talking about, you know, um, assisted living facilities, um, which is actually considered residential, but, um, you know, a hotel, um, uh, some, some sort of, uh, you know, sports complex or, um, but, but the purpose of the overlay, or one of the purposes of an overlay is that you want to retain your zoning, you know, underneath, so to speak. So in this particular instance, looking at Southwest, you know, the decision was made at that time that the that the boards wanted to maintain that land as industrial. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with looking at, you know, some of the existing uses such as the um, sand and gravel pit. Um, but if you didn't do an overlay, you know, one of the things that you might want to look at is, well, should we rezone that? And again, just looking at the Southwest area, you know, does it make sense to rezone all of that industrial land. And, um, and it may very well make sense that, that that land should be rezoned and then sort of um, properly rezoned as to how you want to see that as a community grow. So that's, that's why you would use an overlay district is you wanna retain what's underneath. So you wanna give people the option. They can either, they can either do what's as of right um, or you put an overlay district in this particular case, the major commercial overlay district, some uses are allowed by right, and then some uses are allowed by special permit. So at that point, you know, many, several years ago, there was a decision made that, you know, a certain scale would be okay to allow by right. And then if it, if something was, you know, went beyond that or was larger than that, then we need to take a look at it as a special permit. There's probably some conditions that need to come along because of the impact it's going to have, you know, going to have for the area. I think in general, um, I think this is a this is a, a good conversation and a good start to talk about, you know, do do you want to, as a as a community, do you want to encourage other uses, whether it's more industrial type uses or or do you want to introduce some sort of commercial into the industrial uh, districts? And I think it's a much bigger discussion or, or a much longer discussion that needs to happen. And I think you really, my, my advice, my opinion is that you really should wait till this implementation committee, the master plan implementation committee, you know, gets going. They, they've had two meetings in one month. I mean, they're really just getting to know each other. Um, the the one of their first assignments, just as an example, um, I mean, again, Millie and, and Amy are part of the implementation committee, but one of the first assignments was to take a look at everything that's been listed in the implementation chapter and rank those, bring those forward as a committee. We're going to discuss that in greater detail at the October 21st meeting, but I can tell you right off the bat, downtown is one of the ones that came up. There is no one talking about industrial development right now on the master plan implementation committee that did not come through as as anyone's to, they were asked to do their top three overall pri, uh, rank, uh, recommendations and their top three short-term recommendations now those are already listed those have already been established in this in the master plan so that's what we're working from is the master plan so already what has happened 
or, or what, what has risen to the surface is the downtown, which is no surprise and there's other topics. Um, but I can tell you that industrial development is not something that has risen to the top. So I do not think that it's um, necessarily a wise um, move at this point to do, to, to, to make any decisions and bring zoning forward at this year's town meeting um, about, about making, you know, large scale changes without seeing what the implementation committee is going to come up with and suggest. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're eventually going to, you know, feed out, you know, sort of go back to all of the boards and say, um, you know, these are the top three priorities that we've all agreed on, the top three recommendations. And, uh, you know, one of them might involve um, the, the planning board. One of them might involve uh, DPW. One of them might involve, you know, the historical commission. So those are the three things that all of, the, all of these boards should be working on together. So, so my question would just be, um, if industrial development doesn't rise to the top, then it's going to be a long time before they get to this. And in the meantime, if we have something like the sand and gravel company sell their land, we don't have anything but industrial there. So would we... No, you have the major commercial overlay district. Oh, it does hit that area? Yes. It hits that far? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So just as a specific example for that, Terry, I mean, that, and that is, that is right. something that, you know, everyone is very well aware of, um, you know, for probably 20 years, I keep hearing, oh, in five years, we'll be, <laughs> so, and they're still going strong. Um, but, um, but that does, but that does exist. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that just be, just because, or, or that the, final determination is now up to the implementation committee but you know we we've we've paid a lot of money and, and gone through a lot of meetings to get that master plan together and out of it has come the implementation committee and you know they need to do their they, they need to be able to do their job um, true but we need to be able to do our job and if we can we can't wait until industrial development comes to the top of the list because I just don't think it will I think that, that downtown should be the focus, economic development, sidewalks, all these other things that should be the focus. Mike, I don't, maybe, I mean, it's a very valid point you're making. You know, do we need to rezone something? Do we wanna do anything big? Maybe not, but can we do little things that just make, just help us? Like, are there interim changes we could make or the board wants to make? I have no idea, but, but I do think that I don't want master plan to be our be all end all because we have been waiting. This has been, I've been hearing this since, I first joined the board that we're waiting for master plan and we're going to be continuing to wait. A lot of ships might sail in that, that interim period that I worry about a little bit. So that's just my concern with that. I don't know how other board members feel in general. Do we, are there little, are there steps we can take in the interim? Are we, what do we do? Yeah, and I don't, and I don't think, I mean, just to sort of close out my comments, Carrie, and for the rest of the board, I'm not saying that, you know, that you don't, that you don't, you know, look at zoning, you know, you, you, you woohoo, you got three years off, you know, while you wait for the implementation committee, but it's just, you know, it's a, it's a big undertaking, and it, I mean, and the town should be very proud of themselves for, for having this implementation committee and going forward with it, because a lot of times, I mean, communities will put together a master plan, and then it, nothing happens with it. You know, because it's just it's just handed out to everybody, and you know, and and Northboro took the next step to say, you know what? No, we want we want to implement this. We don't want it just to be sitting there. So we need to we need to give it that time. I mean, it's you know, it and and time is what it takes. And and again, they you know they they've met their meeting. They've they've got a schedule for the next five months, and um and I think you'll be hearing a lot from the implementation committee. Okay, that's a good point. Okay, thoughts on how that impacts us or what we want to do next? After everything I just heard, I do agree the overhaul, I mean, the over, uh, overlay may be too major to do, and an overall change is probably too major, but I do think we stay open if there's a use, like just how last year we did it indoor recreation, because a lot of towns were doing you know, the indoor soccer work, soccer, the teamworks, the four kicks, the all the little things. So last year we did add industrial, rec I mean, indoor recreation to industrial. 
I guess if there is a use that other towns have in their industrial or, or our residents come forth and they want to see in our industrial, then we can look at it that way. After learning more about the overlay, in my opinion, may, that we probably shouldn't go that way right now. Okay, other thoughts? So maybe what we can do is think about if we were to look at it for similar to what we did last year, if there are commercial uses, um, and then I guess the brewery will be a wild card as well, if that's allowed in industrial and also what other districts, whatever other districts that would go in, um, maybe as a board action, just look going through the use table and looking at anything like Amy did last year, was that the year before? I think it was two years ago. Uh, no, that was last year. Now I can't remember. In any case, um, you know, if we had empty warehouses, are there any good uses that would work? Or if we had the space or the land went for sale, any other uses that um, would just open it up a little bit? I think the original, Anthony, I think you originally put out there opening up commercial uses, but I don't know if you had anything specific in mind at that time. Did you have anything specific in mind? I don't have anything spe specific and I still don't. I think that there's a lot of good ideas. And I think it does make sense to look at the use table. Um, I'm not certain exactly what, you know, what the right things would be. Okay. All right, so for this one, why don't, um, if the board takes time to just look at the use table and maybe think about any uses that would work or um, possibilities, and we'll regroup on that. And if it's, or if it's nothing, it's nothing, but we'll at least take that look. So, so currently the major commercial development overlay district is only specifically for the Southwest cutoff area industrial. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. It's the, the, um, the way the bylaw is written is it's, it's specifically in there describing the Southwest, um, corridor, or I, I forgot exactly what the verbiage is, but, um, so, you know, a, a, another thing, you know, just people want to, you know, kick this around in their heads. Um, you know, Amy, like she said, she, you know, started, you know, this is a starting point. You know, we, mm -hmm. she put this together yesterday. I mean, one of the things you might want to look at in the bigger picture is, well, maybe it's not so much that, um, that you need to um, uh, come up with a, a new bylaw, but you might want to just look at okay, what does the major commercial overlay district say? And maybe, yeah. th maybe that bylaw just today, how it's written is applicable for the other industrial areas. You know, we have three industrial areas in town. So, um, but, but the reason why initially this focused on, on that area was, you know, because we had anticipated that, um, that that was never going, the majority of that property was never going to be developed um, as as an industrial piece of property, and for you know up up until you know the development, the the commercial development and the uh, the the multifamily housing, you know there wasn't sewer um, or water there, so so that you know the, a, a huge hindrance, um, which is why we don't see you know a, um, a Marriott or a Residence Inn or you know anything on our section of Route Nine um, because there there aren't the um, uh, you know, public facilities that that could support it. So, you know, that that's something else that you want, you know, that we need to take into into factor when you're looking at where, you know, where do you want to expand commercial um, uh, development, you know, you have to take a look at, you know, again, what what are the, the um, town services, you know, are there water and sewer um, available, you know, because a, um, a, a a distribution facility, you know, that that has uh, you know, five full time staff working there, um, and you know, by the code needs one bathroom. You know that that's a significantly different kind of septic system than you move a, a hotel into the industrial district mm -hmm. or you move a restaurant into the industrial district. You know, significantly different kinds of of um, yes. impacts yes. and what they need for infrastructure. Yep. Okay, clarification and, on the commercial. I, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And just going back to Kathy's comments about the implementation committee, one of the points on the implementation committee and their agenda item is to look for extending water and sewer within the community. 
So maybe at some point down the line, you have the opportunity to have a hotel. Do you know what I mean? So that's part of that long-term planning that I mentioned in the beginning that you need to look at, right? It might be great to have a hotel, but you can't have it there because you don't have the resources to have it there. But the implementation committee might look and see and see how you can get to that point where that might be attractive for an investor. That just is not happening yet. Okay. Um, quick clarification on the current overlay district. So it says that it's um, in the vicinity of the Southwest connector as shown on the zoning map. Is there, are there actual lines somewhere that show that so that if somebody came and said whether they're under covered by it or not? Um, no, there, there wasn't any, with an overlay district, you don't have, you don't physically show it. Um, be, <coughs> excuse me, because it's an overlay district, so it's not, it's not a new zoning district, but that's where the description comes in of, you know, the Southwest. So when you when you look at the southwest, you you, you know you, you see the southwest portion of the town. It's zoned industrial, and that's that's what this is for. But how would you not like? How, what if like couldn't you extend it? Who says what the? I don't know. Maybe I guess that makes sense. I just like on the groundwater overlay. I can look at the map and I see where the overlays are. Well, right, because that that's physically um, again, even though. Know, uh, right, it, it's related to, you know, to a scientific draw, you know, water draw, draw, draw down for the wells. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So sounds like we need a little more information. We, the board needs to think a little bit about if we want commercial uses, are there any specific or do we want, how do we want to move forward with this one? So that has a TBD. Question, Kathy, is there sewer on Barefoot Road? You just muted. Oh, sorry. I thought it was on <laughs> um, a portion of Barefoot Road. Yes, it has sewer. And that oh, was yeah. all part of, that was back in the early 1980s. Um, that was part of a grant um, that the town um, applied for and received about economic development, industrial development. Um, so that was very specific that sewer was brought up to that area. But it doesn't. Which half? I'm just curious where, if it's on the 290 side or the other side. Well, it's it's not so much that it's it, it it's um it ends before the railroad, so it you know de depending on which way you're traveling on. But I mean, if you if you come up Saul and Pond Road, and you know take your left onto Barefoot, yeah, you know sewer is available initially there. Oh, hi. How many feet it goes up, I don't know, but you know we can find that out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And I will send an email to Tom to ask him about um, finances. He's our planning board rep to the financial committee. So I'll ask him about um, that question we had about industrial versus commercial. Okay, um, a quick one for me, the historical district possible bylaws. Norm had sent an email that um, there's no time sensitivity there, no need to do it. So I withdraw that. So we don't, unless anyone, ha I assume nobody wants to push forward despite hearing that they're not pushing. <laughs> okay. Millie, that's your understanding as well. Uh, yep. Okay. So I withdraw that one. Um, also, let's see, I'm just going to go on my list then. So sober homes, Millie, that's anything from you there? I'm still just trying to gather whether there's been any change uh, either legislatively or statewide about definitions, what other towns are doing. It doesn't really seem like there's been a lot. So um, hopefully I'll get in touch with, with Bob about that and see if he's finding anything differently. I, I can add to that, Millie. Um, I actually specifically talked to Bob about that today, Bob Frederico, our, our building inspector. Yeah. And um, there hasn't been any, um, any new uh, legislation, any changes to the building code or, or any other of the, you know, like electrical plumbing um, regarding sober houses. So that's, that hasn't, I'm not exactly sure what the, what the, you know, possibilities were, but that hasn't gone anywhere. Um, but in general, the, you know, the, again, the, the use of the, the sober house use, 
Mm -hmm. um, that is something that's protected, you know, under what's called the Dover Amendment, um, which is, you know, in, in the state statute that the, there's, again, you know, churches, schools, um, churches, schools, daycares, I think some sort of solar. Agricultural. Um, yeah, and and the and the sober yeah. houses, the um, methadone clinics, you know, I, I, the sorts of uses that people, you know, bristle at um, initially, uh, you know, those are all protected uses um, under again what's always referred to as the Dover Amendment. So towns cannot zone against those. They cannot say that they that that type of use can only go in one district or can't go in any districts. But you know what the courts have said is that you know reasonable regulations can apply to right. them. So you know when, just as an example, you know um, a couple of the churches in town over the years have done additions. So you know they have had to come in for site plan review. Um, the town in general couldn't say no, you can't expand. You know it, we don't want that use anymore. Um, but what the town can say is. You know, we have a site plan process, and you need to go through that site plan. We need to make sure that you have enough parking. We need to make sure that, um, you know, looking at our our setbacks. Now, recently, our setback, a particular setback, came into question about a daycare um, facility in an industrial zone, and um, we were not successful in in um, in enforcing uh, that particular setback, but the but the again, the, the uses themselves are protected. So as far as the zoning, Millie, and, and you know, I know you've talked about this for, for a couple of years, is um, it, it is it more that you're concerned about um, that there's like you know public safety, you know, the, the police, fire, or maybe not so much police, but I mean as far as like fire regulations, border health regulations. Um, you know, because that's not anything that we can do through zoning, but say if a facility wanted to come into town um, and um, I mean, we have plenty, of, you know, every community does with their group homes all over our communities um, and that, that blend in with the neighborhood. But say for, for uh, just a sort of far out example, if, if, you know, some sort of facility wanted to come in um, that was you know, starting out on raw land as opposed to rehabbing a house or something for, you know, for individuals um, that, that would live there would support staff. Um, you know, that type of facility would, again, be allowed anywhere by zoning, but they would have to come through the site plan process. And, and again, we're, you know, you're not controlling the use, but you're looking at, you know, all of the dimensional requirements and, um, uh, you know, setbacks, parking, um, you know, lighting, that type of thing. So, so I don't know if there's if if there's something specific, Millie, that that you are anticipating that zoning could um, regulate or. I I honestly think Kathy, it's more of the um, maybe a, a bylaw uh, regulation, not not as much zoning as you say that it really can be put up anywhere, but looking at what the safety you know, features could be and the fact that none, these houses oftentimes have no oversight, no state regular regulation or certification is of concern. And I think that um, you know, to have some, uh, some writing in place that might help people who want to start one or be involved or become uh, you know, under the, the care of one, there's an expectation of public safety for the tenants, but also for the, uh, the town, the, just as you would maybe in any type of lodging or group home situation, uh, whether it's a, uh, you know, a, a halfway house or even, a, you know, something that comes to mind is something like a fraternity or sorority where you have multiple non-family members living in a large a group arrangement that you, know, you just wanna have some idea of what's, how things are going and, and who, who they answer to if, if you want to have that be managed. Safety is obviously, I think, a big thing. Mm -hmm. 
So Florida they... Health, I don't know if Florida Health gets involved. Uh, obviously, fire department. Um, so, Kathy, are you saying even if a, a sober home comes in, they are already subject to site plan review or not even site plan review? Well, if um, it, it, it depends on how one of these facilities, you know, uh, I, I mean, just in general, I'll just refer to them as a group home. And I honestly don't even know if that's a, a correct terminology anymore. But um, a lot of time group homes, like the, the agency will... Um, will purchase, you know, a single family home um, in an existing neighborhood. And, and so that, so that, that wouldn't go through site plan, you know, they're, they're, um, you know, they're just moving into an existing home and they happen to have, you know, again, uh, you know, four, as an example, you know, four unrelated um, adults living there, but, you know, but they are supervised and their staff there 24 hours a day. So something like that, you know, moving into just a, a home or, or building a home, um, you know, in town specifically for that purpose, you know, that, that wouldn't come through site plan, but um, the, and I'm going to use the term facility for lack of a better word, but if a, but if a, a facility say that was, you know, housing, um, uh, you know, 20 people, 30 people, um, there, there's a, 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 a facility up on um, Whitney Street, right on the sort of corner of Whitney Street and Whitney Ave. Um, and there are multiple people there. They don't live there, but it's an educational facility for, um, um, and, and, I, and I'm, I don't know what the affliction is. I don't remember actually, um, but they, that was an allow, you know, they were allowed to go there. They, they chose an industrial zone, but, but we had them go through site plan. You know, it was a brand new building, um, needed parking, uh, needed van drop off areas, that type of thing. So that went through site plan. But if someone is just, um, and a lot of times th these agencies are, are on a much smaller scale, where they're either you know building a house or or buying an existing house that doesn't go through site plan, right? Exactly. Hmm. So, so Kathy, if I'm correct, the property on Main Street that is a large group home did not go through any site plan approval by any boards in town. Is that correct? It, uh, I'm not aware <laughs> of there's a, a group home on Main Street. I thought that's what was happening on the main street across from, um, uh, I'm trying to think of where it is. It's down towards where they cleared down towards Marlboro Savings Bank. It's on the um, St. Mary side. Oh, okay, on West yeah. Main Street. Uh, all that I'm aware of so far there is that they brought an A&R to the, you know, to the, to the board. The A&R was signed because they, they developed or they, they divided it into two properties. Um, so it's two lots. So I, I don't know that they've even applied for building permits or who it is. Right. I honestly don't know. Right. So you see group homes across not even our only our community, but other communities. And they, uh, they actually don't go before the boards, right? It's this, they are a protected class and the state understands that and they must have some guidelines they have to go through. Because you do see things that changing, you see ramps put in or different types of um, things happening to a house to adhere to whoever the tenants are within the house. I would think that maybe because of Millie, you, you might have a concern about this. There is a facility that's down, um, I forget the, where the Westboro Courthouse is mm -hmm. um, in Westboro. You know, you could certainly uh, check with that facility there. That's considered to be a, uh, a, a drug treatment center, you know? Yeah, I um, think that's, I think if the one, if, if it's the one I'm thinking of that spectrum. Yes. And, and I believe that that's considered a halfway house, which is a little bit different than a sober home. Yeah. So they are, those places are regulated and they're covered by um, uh, insurance and things like that. So they do have regulations versus a sober home, which is oftentimes where people have to go after their insurance covers their rehab and their, um, their progress. So what happens is, is people end up going into these more extended care options because they're, they're, they're physically, they've rehabilitated and they're recovered to some degree, 
but mentally, emotionally, psychologically, they're not prepared to go out into the normal, not normal, but the, the regular world. So these types of homes oftentimes aren't really defined as a halfway house or a, um, a treatment facility. Oftentimes they're not getting really any treatment any longer. They're just trying to reintegrate into society in a, a more gradual manner. But as Kathy indicated, they must be a protected class because Kathy, didn't you say they are on the protected class list? They are. So they must in yeah. some form need to, fill, to fulfill guidelines with regards to fire safety, having smoke detectors in the house or whatever like that. I mean, that's just state or, um, you know, the police departments or um, board of health. I mean, certainly I would think somebody who has had a complaint, they could call the departments and issue a complaint or their concerns. They, um, they I just are, don't know what uh, my yeah. concern is as a board is what are you going to do for zoning of it, right? So do you have, are you just going to do new construction of it or are you going to do an existing home, which is maybe what you're seeing now where they're going into existing homes and just, you know, doing something within an existing home. And then if you do, are you just going to be rejected by the attorney general's office, even if it goes at town meeting, because the yep. state has already said this is a protected class because they have disabilities, right? So I feel like maybe there is um, a concern there by residents, but is it a concern of new construction or because as Kathy said, under new construction, you then ask them to come from the board for a special permit or, you know, to site plan review, review because not special permit because they're in allowed use, right? So it's mm -hmm. site plan review. But if it's an existing houses that you see within neighborhoods that people are actually starting up sober houses and having concerns, yeah. I don't think that's a planning board issue. I think that's more of an issue within the various um, departments, like is it a fire issue? Is it a building issue? Is it a board of health issue? So, because yeah, I think I, in the I, end, you're probably going to get rejected by the attorney general. To, to some degree, I think that's, that's very possible. I just was, am looking at what some other towns have struggled with to try to um, provide, it, it is a, considered a disability, but it's not as in people who can't really physically take care of themselves. So it's not as much of a structural um, element. It's more of a just... Um, it's a mental disability. It's a yeah. whatever disability it is, the state has granted them a protected class. Yeah. So I don't... Uh, I think that the staff is guiding us in saying that they're probably not suggesting that there's anything right now in zoning that we can do that it needs further inquiry either through the legislative body or maybe you reach out and send a letter to the board of selectmen who oversee those other um, departments the board of health or whatever and see if there's any other ways that the departments in the town because we're zoning we don't we're not in charge of departments we're not in charge of the fire board of health or police that's right. under the purview of the board of selectmen, right? We're more on if something's new construction that's being built. So you've already, we've already been told that we can't, it's an allowed use. Mm. So if, oh. if the problem that you're seeing that's occurring is in houses that are already built, there's nothing we can do. So Millie, out of curiosity, have you seen in these towns any bylaws on the books or there's no bylaws that we can even find anywhere? I have seen some towns that have struggled to put bylaws in, um, in order to, and, and then they end up in court oh. because you have a building inspector who's trying to enforce a bylaw or a regulation that may or may not apply to this situation. And I've seen uh, cases end up uh, and in in both cases, one in Brockton and one in Fitchburg, ended up basically coming out with two different outcomes: whether or not a building had to put in a sprinkler system. Hmm. And uh, you know, I think it just depended on how the court ruled it. But not having something in in the bylaws to go by has led to some some 
issues with how to manage these facilities. Okay, so how would you like to proceed? I mean, I, you have talked about this for a couple of years. So is it something where it's still worth, you want to have a conversation with Bob or? Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. Um, Amy, Anthony, any thoughts from you? I don't. I don't know enough <laughs> about it, but but yeah. do you think we could get Bob at a future meeting, whether it be like our next meeting or mid November, maybe mid November, so we can ask him the questions we have with the bylaws if we have some questions? Yeah. Is I'm it something say. like Kathy? Do we have to? email Bob and request his presence at the meeting or is it something you could ask him if you would join us? Yeah, I can definitely, I didn't know if I was muted or not. Um, yeah, I can certainly ask um, Bob if he would be available. Um, you know, we just need to, so that he, you know, would be able to come prepared. We just need to kind of narrow it down maybe, you know, at the end of your meeting, um, um, you know, about what you want it, it is to ask him. Okay. Well, it sounds I'm, like, go ahead. I can come up with a list of questions that I have and send them out to everyone if they think that that would be helpful and then they can add questions if they want or it doesn't matter. It's a great idea. Okay. So Millie has questions. We just want to hear from Bob on this um, and then we can settle on that one. So we have a TBD, another TBD. Okay. Um, so signs, Anthony, signs was something you had brought up. Yep, still reviewing. Uh, I'm not prepared tonight to talk about it. Okay. Carrie, oh. I know one of I know one of the things on the list is the um, uh, Ridge Road uh, property. Yeah, and I just wanted to let the board know um, I did meet with the applicant and his engineer yesterday, okay. and so they are working on um, a bylaw, and they would um, well actually what I suggested um, is that they come to your meeting on the twenty first, but you know obviously I needed to check with the board first about that. But um, as part of this discussion, they could come um, to the next meeting and, and talk about their, their proposal. Um, what they're looking at right now is actually um, making some amendments, proposing some revisions to our existing open space bylaw. So I you know, said to them that we would need that you know, a week, at least a week in advance um, if they could get that to me and you know, that I would just verify with the board tonight if it would be okay for them to come um, and join that part of the discussion, you know, as far as the, you know, possible zoning bylaws. Okay. Is that something the board's agreeable to? Are they still, Kathy? Yeah. Are they still not agreeing to the preliminary subdivision plan? Well, um, we actually didn't, we didn't talk about the preliminary subdivision plan. We were more talking about their um, revisions that they would like to make to one of our existing bylaws. So I, um, I honestly couldn't tell you right now, Michelle, whether that, you know, I, I want to see their, their proposal. Um, but I honestly don't remember right now if our, if that part, if that existing particular bylaw, you know, calls for that um, yield plan. So that's, you know, I mean, I consider that still on the table for sure. Um, whether that's what, something that, what bylaw are they going after? Um, they're looking at hold on just one second. I think it's increasing the number of buildings. Yeah, in our um, in our existing bylaw, um, there is a bylaw um, called the open space residential design. Mm. And and I believe that that's the one that they're looking at. Um, so, so as soon as I receive some information from them, you know, I'll certainly share that with everybody.
And then I still, if you just want, I can just hit the other one too. Um, we, and, and I actually, um, I need to respond to um, Aaron Hutchins. He sent me an email a couple of days ago. Um, the, the, um, the consultant that the GIS department was going to look at, I mean, or speak with about, you know, looking at how we can um, uh, sort of extrapolate out frontage um, for the piece on um, Brigham Street. Um, so, you know, we were able to put together all the parcels, but we don't have a way yet to narrow it down to the frontage. So that's still being worked on. Um, so hopefully by the next meeting, um, not to, you know, not to make you think that we're just pushing this down the, down the way, but, um, you know, it's, it's a lot more involved than, than, you know, me looking at the map and, and saying, oh yeah, you know, there's six parcels. So, um, so that's, but that's active. That's, that's being worked on. And hopefully I'll have that information for your next meeting. Okay. Um, one other thing for you was the home, occup home occupation. Anything about that? Um, no, I actually, you know what Barb and I were saying today, there was one more thing that we were going to talk about. <laughs> and then there you go. That was for me to clarify about the um, uh, uh, trucks or vehicles. Um, so I'll, I'll keep that on my list. Okay, so nothing there. So yeah. that's a TBD. Um, and no other um, bylaws from staff. That was it. I didn't know if I, I thought at some point you were going to take a look. I, I I just have a couple myself, Carrie, that I haven't even put into writing yet. Um, okay. And but um, that also was part of um, me meeting with Bob today was, you know, for us to sit down and take a look at like one of the things we talked about today, just to give you an example of, of you know, what's what's being discussed in house. Um, we concluded that we didn't need to do anything uh, zoning wise, but um, one of the things that's uh, coming up or that's going to expire is under the COVID regulations from the governor about outdoor seating for restaurants. Ah. Um, pretty much, you know, that was, you know, during COVID where obviously people um, couldn't and, and, and didn't prefer to be inside, you know, a lot of restaurants went outdoors. So, so a lot of, in, in, across the board in Massachusetts, not just North Bro, but you know, a lot of things were were waived, um, just automatically waived of just you know trying to get these businesses to stay in business. Um, but one of the things I I, I touched base with um, Bob, who also works with the fire department. I talked with the town administrator's office, who issues the liquor licenses, and and we have a really good system in place right now that if any restaurant wants to come. Um, and expand, you know, COVID or no COVID, but, you know, they decide that they want to set up an outdoor patio or, or out, you know, some sort of outdoor seating um, that it's, it's all being reviewed by the various departments. And then if in fact, um, you know, down the line, someone wants to do that and it involves like parking change or they need to expand their parking or, you know, um, uh, changing, um, um, well, actually, it's because mostly they're moving into the parking areas. Um, mm -hmm. That would be something that automatically would come to the planning board now, today, yesterday, tomorrow, you know, through the site plan review process. So we determined that there's not anything that we need to do with our zoning um, to address outdoor dining. So it's, it's already taken care of by other departments that, you know, have to look at, have to look at that, again, regardless of, of uh, COVID. Okay. So that's just that's just one example where you know things we're talking about in our existing bylaw do we need to do something to it? Um, the, the the ones that I have so far are just really I mean it's, I'm not even going to bore you tonight you know I'll put them together but it's it's literally um, you know uh, simple changes or if I or or where I've like seen it doubled up you know someplace in the bylaw and it just needs to be changed. Okay. Um. So we also had the oh the moratorium. So you were asking for um, any other towns that had imposed a moratorium or any reasons why or. Yes, um, I did do some initial research on that um, in reaching out to some communities that, that I know that have had moratoriums in the past, um, including this town. Um, you know, we had done a moratorium. Um, it was, I think it, it, it 
ended up being a citizen petition, but that doesn't that doesn't matter. Um, but you know, on solar, that was um, uh, one of the things. So the um, you know what what you need to do what and and what um, I talked to um, uh, an attorney by the name his, his name is Mark Bobrowski. And um, Mark is the author of a, I mean, he's just about at every, you know, planning conference that, that, that that's ever been held um, as a guest speaker. But Mark um, also is the author of um, what's called the Land Use Handbook, which is something that, you know, every community uses. So anyways, I reached out to Mark um, just in general asking about moratoriums and what what is it or is there anything that a town needs to do in advance, in advance of preparing or proposing a moratorium and and the, the work is 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 afterwards so you can go ahead and propose this is just in general you can go ahead and propose a moratorium but part of your uh, presentation and um, uh, you know discussion at town meeting is that you know if the moratorium on whatever it is is approved um, you know you're you're committing that you're going to study that whatever the issue is um, if, if it's you know if it's the town is has been inundated with um, you know multifamily housing and uh, you know and it's causing um, a, a severe impact to the school system and um, you know to daycare providers or something you know you would then need to if you impose a moratorium on multifamily you would then need to you know spend the next the, the max that you can do is 18 months. That's what the states through the courts have, have allowed. Um, but they try to get you to, the states try to, I mean, the courts try to encourage you to, you know, within a year. So at, for your next town meeting, you're bringing forward some changes to address what, you know, what your concerns were about why you needed this moratorium. Um, so, so you have about a year to, you know, come up with a plan as to how you're going to address it. Now, just, Specifically, looking at you know the, the and again, I know that it's just been a, a general discussion you know amongst the board. Um, again, I go back to the to the um, to the master plan. We created a master plan. The board adopted the master plan. We now have an implementation committee, and to then to then now say in the middle of that process. You know, we we think that that we need a moratorium on a particular kind of development, is it is really contrary to you know the, this whole master planning process. Um, so it might again be something that you want to talk to the implementation committee about, um, and 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 also talk to other boards about you know particularly the board of selectmen, if if you know if people have all of these concerns that that you know we don't want to see temporarily you know growth in the industrial districts or um, or what kind of growth do you want to see in the industrial districts? So even though you don't need to do a study beforehand, you know obviously you have to have that you know multiple discussions about why it is that you want that moratorium and then what you think that moratorium is going to accomplish. You know, and then what are we going to do during that moratorium period? Okay, so there are two moving pieces with this district. One, we talked about the moratorium, and then also we talked about definitions. That was in the that was yeah. the second yeah. piece. Of that. Yeah. So I guess. Had, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, Amy had brought some of those definitions. Oh, that's right, Amy, you had sent from um, Sutton, they had some different definitions that you provided the board. So we have two different components here. It's just thoughts from the board on what makes the best sense for, you know, is it a moratorium? Is it the definition? Is it both? Is it neither? Any thoughts from the board? Well, I, I do think that it's worth looking into to some degree to find out what the um, what the process is, regardless of whether we continue to go forward. I think, you know, partly we're trying to address a, a, a current urgent situation um, to the point with a master plan. I, I'm not sure that it necessarily conflicts with the master plan, but I I mean, I guess I think it's still worth looking into. OK. 
I see this as something to tapping the brakes on a problem, you know, an urgent issue we have at hand, and whether that gets rectified later through the implement, implementation committee or not, um, hopefully would, um, is a different matter. I think right now we're just trying to uh, slow things down so we can get our hands wrapped around a, a current trucking traffic issue. If we were so, to, oh, can, oh, go ahead. Can I just ask a question? You want to put no growth in industrial because of warehouses or trucking issues? I mean, what do you guys, I'm trying to get a grasp what you guys are trying to think about what you're doing here. Millie just said, well, we have an urgent crisis here. So what's the crisis? And then Anthony said, we've got a trucking traffic problem. Is this all uses in industrial or is this just one use in industrial that you're going after? Um, I think we just talked about doing the trucking moratorium, although I guess we often put trucking and warehouse together. So I think it would probably be the trucking and warehouse. What, would it be warehouse? Did we talk about that or just trucking? I guess both are up. I mean, it's above to board discussion. Are you talking about no trucks in industrial land to travel through? Or are you talking about a trucking center? No, like it'd be more trucks trying. traveling. Well, obviously trucks would be able to travel through there. It would just be a moratorium on the use until we get a handle on what's happening there. So if we were to get a new application, well, we wouldn't get in the period of the moratorium, there wouldn't be any additional applications. For warehousing distribution, right? Was it that? I think it was that. And I if you look at the um page 738, distribution and transportation uses has two definitions. There's a warehouse and there's trucking, rail, or freight terminal. Um, what we've had is applications always for warehouse, but they always end up, not always, I shouldn't say that, but some of them have ended up to be distribution and trucking. So both of those fall under the definition. So if you were going to do a moratorium, you'd probably have to have a moratorium on both warehouse and trucking rail or freight terminal, just to get a grasp and see how the board and other town boards maybe want to go forward. Mm -hmm. If people watch the selectmen meeting, there's a lot of discussion. Yeah. Carrie, if um, just you know, if you're specifically, um, if you're specifically looking at, uh, you know, if, if your if your concern is that there's um, that there's a, a a trucking issue or a traffic traffic issue, uh, you know, I mean, I think I think we need to be very specific. Well, well, what is that, and is there and is there a way to address it within existing bylaws or or adding bylaws or is the you know I, I think it's a big jump myself to go to a moratorium but um, but I also think you know um, the the selectmen have been but I think this has been on I don't attend all of their meetings um, but I think it's been on just about every single you know agenda of theirs and the Department of Public Works has um, put together, uh, you know, I think numerous memos on what what is being done within um, at least their department, uh, uh, as far as uh, you know, whether it's you know striping the road, you know, um, uh, the truck exclusions, um, the the Jake. I'm not even sure that's the right term, but the Jake breaks bylaw that was approved last year. Um, so I think, you know, again, I, I think it needs to be, you know, defined on what what this problem, you know, what you perceive this problem to be, and then are there ways that it, that it can be addressed or needs to be further addressed? If if you know what the selectmen have been doing with the DPW, you know, isn't isn't addressing it, or or you don't think yeah. that that's enough. Well, one huge thing is enforcement isn't being so. We still get emails about enforcement. We still get emails about you know whether you brought the Jake breaks. I think an email just came through on Jake breaks. So, 
in addition to the issues at hand, we don't, for the bylaws we have on the books, we're having a problem enforcing because of whatever snag, like for example, the turning, uh, if the Bob would have to be sitting there watching it, seeing it in real time to enforce it, or, you know, it's so it's so difficult to enforce it with what we have. Do we need to do we need to evaluate enforcement? Do we need to look at I don't know. Is there something we could do differently, or are there different? I, I'm not sure. I guess it's a good point. Do we bring up all the problems on the table and figure out how we solve it? You know, maybe that's the next iteration of this. Yeah, and I mean, and I think that, you know, not to um, not that two boards you know can't be discussing the same thing, but I mean. You know, I don't think a, a, a lot has to be reinvented. I mean, I think we can be doing this in conjunction with the selectmen or looking to see what the selectmen have done so far. Um, like I said, I don't attend every selectman's meeting. So I don't know if some of you do and you, you, you know, seen what and, and heard what they have, um, you know, done to date. Um, I do know that there um, is a significant increase in compliance. Um, with the companies that people were having issues with. Um, but, you know, I don't have the numbers here for you tonight, but, but I know that's something, again, that the selectmen have been working with. Yeah. Have been working, you know, with those, with those companies. Okay, other thoughts on this? Um, if you want to ask a question from the Board of Selectmen that's been appointed to the planning board, Scott Rogers is right sitting in the audience and can participate and he can give you input now. It's Jason, Jason is our liaison. He's by the Board of Selectmen as liaison to the planning board. Actually, I thought that once too, Michelle, but Jason said it's him. Even though Scott's watching the meeting, Jason um, told me that he is the liaison to the planning board. Okay, well, right. but there's a board of selectmen sitting watching. I mean, I, they could give you input. So right. that's okay. I actually just okay. want to, um, I, I've been watching the meetings and I think they're doing a lot for this. I, I'm concerned about on the zoning side of it, um, they, they aren't able to, um, that enforcement piece of it is if we're so we've talked before on this board about if we're going to place conditions on an application and they're not being enforced, what um, peace of mind do we have in placing those conditions? And what is the impact of that? Um, so if we're still getting these applications and we're still putting conditions on and they're still not being enforced, does it make sense to continue to take them on? Um, or do we need some sort of moratorium where we can solve this problem, get all of our pieces in a row, whether it's the selectmen, um, they have their component to it, we have our component to it. Do we need to level set this what's happening in these districts, what is specifically what's happening in the areas that abut the residential areas and that's causing a lot of trouble. Um, I don't know, maybe a moratorium is too far. Um, but it seems like we haven't been able to solve this otherwise and applications will still continue to come in. And so we're just, the problem is getting worse or, or it could be get exponential with each application that comes in. So. Do we need to do anything? What can we do? I think it's something. We could even like discuss it up until January. Do we want a meeting where we talk about what the issues we think? Do we need definitions? Do we need this? Right. And then like we did with duplexes, with the duplex moratorium, when it came time to town meeting, we didn't have all the answers. So we had a duplex moratorium. So if if we make a list of what all our concerns are, how, and, and maybe there's just not enough time. Like, how do we look at these concerns before January, February? Yeah, well, why don't we could start with that? I mean, certainly we have a history of emails of concerns that have come in uh, pretty much weekly. Mm -hmm. So if we take, start with those concerns and sort of you know, add our own concerns to it. Maybe that's just a discussion that we can have as the next step of this and decide, are our concerns at a level that warrants some sort of moratorium or do our, can our concerns be answered in other ways to Kathy's point about, you know, is there already a bylaw in the books or can we tweak something? Millie, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I mean, I guess I do think that it doesn't hurt to start with the, uh, some of the definitions mm -hmm. and 
maybe teasing out what when people are making their applications, what they're applying for, so that we have better insight and knowledge as to what's coming. Hmm. Um, Amy, you sent over information from Sutton. Right, and I don't, uh, and um, I should have been ready to talk about that tonight. I can, but one of the conditions, they had a list of 36 conditions that they put on their warehouses and one of them had to do with an empty warehouse. So if they got an application for a warehouse that didn't have any occupants, once occupants started occupying the building, they had to come back in front of the planning board and they asked for a new traffic study. They asked for mitigation, depending on what and who occupied those buildings. So it wasn't just an empty warehouse that all of a sudden the, the, it couldn't change. Like there were definitely conditions on there to bring the applicant back. So this was the document, you shared this document with the board that had, this is the 36 different conditions. Yeah. So maybe that's something if people haven't had time to look at, we read some of that, but then it goes back to enforcement. Like, we're talking about how we add conditions, but we can't enforce them. I also started looking at different towns and they added more than just a fine. And I don't want to penalize companies. And I'm not even talking about an industrial warehouse. This could be anything, but they went as far as if the penalties, like the fines weren't being paid, they have a clause in their bylaw where the building um, enforcement officer would would pull the certificate of occupancy. So they lost their permit to run their facility. Hmm. I could share that too for next time. It was just, it was just, I was looking through enforcement in other towns to see how they, most people had the 100, 200, $300 fine. And hmm. then it was Wellesley who added, they could pull the certificate of occupancy if they had someone who wasn't following conditions for the bylaws. Any of, of the board members from these other towns? Hmm? Do you know any of the board members from these other towns? To see no, I was going through for the groundwater that I'm going to um, talk to later, but I actually looked at 90 <laughs> different committees and different bylaws. Just to, I was just looking through enforcement but I don't yeah. know anybody in Wellesley now. And just, I don't know if it works. Right, I'm just curious as to how they feel the enforcement is working for them. Right, I didn't ask. I just saw it. Mm-hmm. Oh, but, Kathy, oh, go ahead. Oh, but we could call them if it was something we we're interested in to see if it actually worked. Just curious. Did we hear back on the um, common driveway the special permit with uh, FedEx and Amazon, what I get town council was getting back to. No, I haven't. Um, I have not heard back from him on that. I'll follow up on that. He actually called um, just before our meeting tonight, whether it was about that or not. I don't know, but I'll follow up with him tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That just popped oh, in. Nothing. And it's nothing I would really ever want to do to somebody, but it's just something they had on their bylaw list. I mean, on there, yeah, and their bylaws. And that you also sent us definitions that. Yep. Yep. Okay. So for for this one for next time, why don't we consider the problems at hand? Maybe look at those definitions um, of what other towns are doing. We talked about possibly maybe add if there are ways we need to break it out differently or update it. Um, so let's look at the definitions. Let's think about the problems at hand. Um, and I think that's it for that one. And maybe when Bob's here too, we could talk about enforcement when we talk about bylaws. Mm -hmm. okay. See if he has any ideas. All right, that's a good idea. Ms. Maselli also had sent a letter about enforcement. So it would probably fall under the same thing. I think she sent it to the whole board about an enforcement problem she was having. And that would be another question for Bob is, 
if there's an enforcement issue on the weekend, who do you call? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know Kathy? No, it's, yeah, it's the police. If there's, I mean, that, that's who's in town 24 hours a day. So right, but, it, but the enforcement isn't criminal, it's civil. So would the police even? No, they wouldn't be, they, they could just take the report and then they would provide it to, you know, whichever appropriate department, you know, come Monday. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, okay. just, it's just how, you know, the, the town works. I mean, there, there isn't a building inspector or zoning enforcement officer, you know, on call like there, there is for, you know, police and fire. Right. And the dog officer, is that what they do on the weekends? Um, that I don't know. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Okay, um, Amy, did you want to jump into your groundwater committee? You mentioned that you looked, you're doing some research for that. Sure, that's what I did. Is I did some research for the groundwater, and I actually looked through committees. I got to 90 out of the 351 towns to see what type of committees they had, and if any other town had a groundwater committee. And the only one that did was Sherborne, and they just started it this year. And what Sherbron did was um, they actually go above and beyond where they do a highly detailed analysis. So, and try to protect their groundwater, whether it's um, a turf field, they did research into what type of crumb is used for the turf field so it's safer on groundwater. Um, they had discussed one application and the way that they report back is they say their groundwater committee has no serious concerns. And, and when thinking about ours, um, the way we do get a report back for the groundwater committee, um, their advisory, but the memos come back saying, they take a vote, the groundwater advisory committee votes to recommend approval. And whether they say it's a motion to approve or a motion to recommend approval, it's more of a legal liability for the town and the boards. Like I was thinking, you know, I know I had mentioned maybe we don't need the groundwater committee, but if as a board we want to discuss, you know, keeping the groundwater committee because it would be an important committee to protect our groundwater, maybe we want to list out what we hope to get for recommendations because they're advising the special permit granting authority um, about whether they think it's safe on the groundwater. But I also think it's very important that they do not vote because they are an advisory committee and um, it should be more like what the other groundwater committee did was the groundwater committee has no serious concerns, but if the special permit granting authority does approve, we would recommend the following conditions because I do think the conditions are very helpful, but there shouldn't be two boards that either approve or deny a groundwater decision. That should fall upon the special permit granting authority, which is what all the other 89 towns did that I looked at, and even 90, even Sherborne, they did not vote because it's up to the special permit granting authority to vote on whether or not to approve a groundwater special permit. So as an advisory board, they, even in our bylaw, it states they're supposed to make findings and recommendations, but I don't think the recommendations should be whether to approve or deny. So what you're saying, does that constitute a bylaw change or something like what does this look like? If we were to say, here's what we expect, is that something that's a bylaw change or a discussion or what does that look like? Yeah, probably more, not a bylaw change, maybe. I was thinking more, maybe a memo to the groundwater committee or chair to chair, you could talk to the chair because originally I'd said um, maybe you know, we didn't need the groundwater committee because um, there's one special, well, there are two special permit granting authorities and, and they were advisory, but 
But after thinking about it, I do think the groundwater committee adds a lot by reviewing the applications before they come to the boards. And so I was just trying to look into it. I was trying to see what the other towns do. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to think hard on what is the best for our town. But I do think advisory committees should not be voting mm -hmm. because they're only supposed to be providing recommendations or advice. And it's a legal liability if, if two boards are voting on the same thing. And those are just my thoughts. I, I hope I got them out clearly and it's not too confusing. And I know I've definitely talked to Jason in the past and he he agrees that it's an advisory committee and they they're, they even tell the applicants now that in no way does our discussion give you approval for the special permit granting authority. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's the way that the memos are written and the votes are taken that could cause an issue. Anthony, as a groundwater rep, any thoughts on that? <laughs> To put well, so it's an interesting point because in our last meeting, I made a motion to to deny, which <laughs> was told uh, by the chair that we do not deny. We, we either recommend or we don't recommend. Um, so, I, and that was, the, and whether that's new um, or not, I can't say, but I'd say the current state of the board is a position to either recommend or to not recommend. Um, however, they still vote, which I guess kind of makes sense. And to me, not to interrupt, but it seems like semantics. When I did go back and watch it, mm -hmm. and and for the second one, it, it, they don't rec they don't vote to approve, but they vote to recommend approval. So, in a way, if you are even a court situation. Whether you vote to approve or you vote to recommend to approve, it's it's pretty similar. Kathy, were you trying to say something? Yeah, I, just to clarify, um, you know, uh, all the advisory boards in town, I mean, and the two that I deal with and one that I deal with, you know, very specifically, the Design Review Committee, um, both of those boards, as long as they have been in, ex in existence, and every time staff meets with a new person that comes onto those boards, it is made very clear that these are advisory boards. So there's no, there's no question amongst staff or amongst the board members that, they're, that, that they are a permit granting authority. They, both of those boards know they're not, but, they, but they, they have to vote. They have to advance the project. So they both know, both boards are, know that they are making a recommendation. Um, it, as Anthony mentioned, you know, he, I, I wasn't, you know, I don't attend the groundwater meetings, but I mean, he made a motion denied and, and was, you know, just, you know, educated that that's not what the board does. So they, they don't, all the, the, both those boards know that they are not granting any permits. They know that their, what they provide as a recommendation is that it is a recommendation. And, and either board, either special permit granting authority board can go against those boards. I mean, they have, they have every right to do that as a special permit granting authority. Um, typically the, the boards won't because the advisory boards have followed the process and have met with the applicants and have you know, met with the applicants multiple times. Um, so I, I, don't, I just wanna clarify, I mean, there's no confusion on, on boards, on the groundwater advisory committee advisory committee right in their title and the design review committee they know that they are not issuing a permit right amy you have something yes this isn't um me um blaming the advisory committees it's just the way it's worded maybe in the decisions mm -hmm. um, when i looked at older decisions from the design review it would say in um say it was a decision for something on barefoot road it said that the design review met with um, the applicant on these three dates. But lately, the decisions say the design review recommends or voted to approve the site plan. I think it's all in the semantics and the wording. Like, it can be like the design review, yeah, they met certain times and they moved it forward, but the design review doesn't really have the authority 
to vote on the site plan because the site plan is approved by the special permit granting authority. And I think it's not blaming the design review or blaming the groundwater committee, but I think it's the way the memos are written or the votes are taken. It's how to move it forward without it being a legal liability to say. Well, uh, Amy, can I ask like, who, who's confused? Yeah. I've never heard a single. I've never heard a single board member or applicant say that they were confused. Oh no, the like, applicants will say they approved it. Groundwater approved it, or I, but, I've heard but that. But they, but they know. But they know. They know that. I mean, and you may say it's semantics, and we're not going to teach people how to speak at meetings. But I mean, they, they, you know, every there's just there's absolutely no question that those are advisory boards. But would it judge? I mean, right. it's just, there's just, we've never heard a complaint from any applicant like, oh, I thought the groundwater committee, you know, approved it and then the ZBA denied it. You know, what's I going have. on with that? No. Yeah, so Amy, you know, I think I've been on the design review committee for many years and there were times they were always advisory. They always knew. I don't understand the comments that you're making. I don't, I think they're false, but I'll tell oh, you right now, there were times when it was on design review and the design review would bring recommendations to the planning board. And maybe someone would say, well, I prefer this because they were the permitting authority. And so they were able to override it and say, okay, let's have a fence here instead, or let's do that because they had the final approval. And of course, when you're on a committee, you're asking for a vote. You're trying to figure out from the committee, are we all in agreement that we want this fence to be black? Can we move forward to the next subject matter? I mean, I totally disagree with some of the statements that you made on that because we never ever gave anyone the impression on design review that their application was approved before the board. Well, it's interesting. So maybe you're talking been... about an advice, maybe you're talking about groundwater. So maybe you need to discuss it with groundwater. But I'm talking about design review. That's that was that's not it's, it's not a true statement. Well, so it's interesting because I remember even explicitly we had an applicant come in who wanted to do stone and the board, the, the design review said do stone and the planning board said, why don't you do mulch? And there was confusion by the applicant that it was already approved by design review, that design review approved stone. So they didn't know if they actually could use mulch instead. So I definitely recall times where it's been confusing and or the language of approval has been there and has been stated over and over again or written in a decision. I don't know if, if the voting piece maybe still has to happen, that, that could be so, but I have known specific instances where that, there's been a confusing issue or stated approval. Um, well, that's according to the chair, right? So you can decide on that as you go through. Do you want stone? Do you want mulch? But what you're saying is, is that these advisory committees are not saying to applicants, well, here your permit's been approved. No, right? I'm not saying that. I'm saying an applicant came in and thought design review had approved one thing and didn't know if the planning board had the ability to say, no, you don't have to do that. So it, there's an example of confusion with the applicant that they think it is an approval or they state it, even if they don't think it, they state it. And well, it has been approved by the, the, the design review committee is coming forward. But you recommended it. You did, that's the, that's right. case so, what, I mean, so what if he's confused? I mean, that's the chair's role to say to the applicant, well, would you like to have mulch, right? I mean, I don't know what you're referring to and what application you're referring to with regards to that, but- um, 109 Main Street. Mm -hmm. Which is what? The green building, the sideways building on Main Street. That was a, it's just an example of a confusion that, that transpired with the language of approval or what's happening. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a valid point. I don't think. I, 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 I can't. There, there, um, if we could eliminate confusion from our jobs, <laughs> from every single one of your jobs, I mean, come on. <laughs> This is, this is, this can't be any more straightforward that these are advisory boards, the boards receiving their memos know that they're advisory boards. 
The applicants yeah. know their advisory boards. I spend half. I mean, if it's if it's 15 hours to 20 hours a week meeting with applicants saying the first thing that you need to do is you need to meet with the advisory boards. Their advisory to the planning board and to the zoning board of appeals, they don't make decisions. You need to go to the special permit grant. I mean, it's every day, folks. Mm -hmm. I just think I just think this is a big discussion about nothing. I think for me to get to the bottom of it, I think we need an executive session because the example that I have needs to be discussed in executive session. And, and I would like to, I think we're probably going to have executive session again before the end of the year. So my example for why I am bringing this forward would have to be discussed there. Okay. And I don't think it's crazy. Anthony, any thoughts from you? Or Millie, you haven't weighed in. Um, I do think that some of it is worth discussing. It sounds like on the groundwater committee thing that it's a might be a procedural change as far as how you verbalize a comment or a concern or a recommendation versus, uh, you know, maybe approval or, or di disapproval. Anthony, anything from you? Oh, you already waited. Uh, you did wait, I'm sorry. You're welcome to, you're welcome to do it again. Oh, no, I just, I, the, the thing that's on the top of my brain right now is also something that would have to be an executive session. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's what's in my head as well. Okay. Um, so, um, can things? we, can I just as a board <laughs> member, you're asking to go into an executive session that we have no knowledge about what it's about. And that <laughs> means you're asking to, have the attorney weigh in on something? Can you tell the other board members, Amy, what your concern is? Is it a property? Is it an application? What are you concerned about? If, if you just, Michelle, if I could just piggyback on that. If their executive session is to discuss something that is, um, that could, the, the, the public discussion of it could be detrimental to the board's position. So, so if you're talking about um, a decision that's a public document, and you have a question about one of the conditions, you can say it right now. That that's not an executive session. Those no, are I think those what are I public. Have to say, I think has to go into executive session with Attorney Dineski because it does have to do with litigation. So we're litigating the, something that the advisory board said. Well, no, it's it's a discussion about it. It's it's not it's a it's a question, but I really don't want to ask it publicly. I can bring it up to you, Kathy, maybe tomorrow off camera and ask you if you think it should be an executive session. But I really don't want to say it right now for okay. that concern. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's leave it at that. Um, I think the only other thing I have is um, we talked about this, and I wrote it down. I'm not sure if it's still on our. Oh, two things. I don't know if it's still on the radar. Um, Amy, you had dark skies. Yeah, I, I sent out a lot of information on that, but I don't feel the need to bring it forth at town meeting this year because it is new to a lot of people. And maybe it is something that can be discussed during the master plan implementation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're withdrawing dark skies? Yep. Okay. Um, can I just make a comment on that? Oh, I, sure. I think the... Um, Amy, I haven't gone through your, your dark sky. I mean, you know, I think we're all relatively familiar with, with dark skies, but I think the um, I think that that's something that we could probably um, not that you have to discuss it at every meeting, but if if there's certain um, if there's certain things like in the dark skies um, bylaw or suggestions or what you know this this agency that, that or this organization that exists about dark skies. Um, you know, if there's something in there, that, um, like it has, to, you know, they, they suggest that it's a certain kind of lumen. I mean, I'm out of my yeah. territory here. We're talking about light bulbs, but yeah. you know, yeah. if they recommend um, something like that, okay, let, I mean, that's just, I can't, it's like not even basic because I don't know what I'm talking about, but if it's, let's just say it's something about like the, the wattage in a, in a light bulb. 
that with dark skies are not dark skies. I mean, that's something like you and the Zoning Board of Appeals as a special permit granting authority when you're doing a site plan review. You know, that's something that you can ask an applicant. I mean, that's all part yeah. of the discussion. So I just I just want to let you know, I just want to let you know that you, you don't some of these things you don't have to wait for a bylaw such as like dark skies. There are right. things that you could say, hey, you know, as you're, as you're meeting with the applicant, um, you know, would you consider, you know, this, this kind of lumens or, I mean, because we've had a couple applicants that have said to you, you know, that our lighting complies with dark skies. So, you know, it's something that either that firm, like that engineering firm is promoting to their clients or that that client, you know, has decided as a company yeah, that's, that's how we're doing our parking lots or that's how we're doing our lighting. So, you know, so there might not be pushback that you think that there might be without having. Well, no, I, I did think it was quick and it could even be a footnote or it could be like a criteria under special permits where it must be dark sky compliant because a lot of people, not residential, but for businesses, a lot of people are pushing dark skies compliant and most companies do it that way. Yeah. But when I brought it up earlier in the spring, Michelle said, you're bringing up something we haven't discussed it as a board. So that's why I was trying to bring it up and discuss it as a board and send out information. That was my whole reason behind it, bringing it up. So I thought by sending out the information, then maybe if there is someone who doesn't know what Dark Skies is, they could read it. And then, like you said, when there's an application, we can ask for it to be dark skies compliant. Okay, so it sounds like withdrawn as a bylaw, but still an, an option in the future, Kathy. It sounds like that's what you're saying. We could still request it. It doesn't have to be a bylaw. Yeah, I, I mean, I th again, I think it, it comes under the big umbrella of you know what you can condition, how you can condition a, okay. a property. Okay, so dark skies withdrawn. Yep. Okay. Um, we also had conversion only in downtown. Amy, you had brought this up. Was this still yeah, in that kind of that went along with the historical? So oh, okay. If norms all set for now, then that can also be Not tabled, and and that could come up with master plan too. Okay, so withdrawn. Okay. Um, the last thing is. Um, Actually, use, I think it, this is the last thing. I don't have anything else on my list. It's just the use variances. So obviously, this is something that has been attempted a couple times. I I still have I haven't reached out to the ZBA yet formally to just you know I wanted to mention it to them. It's obviously a big thing. It would be a big um, ZBA item. So I was going to reach out to them and just get some feedback on that. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on that from this board? The only thing I would, well, not the only thing I would say about that, but I mean, as part of the reaching out to the ZBA and, and um, you know, if, if you, if, if the boards want to move forward with this, you know, whether it's this year, next year, whatever, I think, you know, one of the things that, that we need to do is, you know, take a look at, um, um, you know, what kind of variants, what kind of use variances have been approved in the past have a lot of people applied for like a specific kind of use variance. So again, is that something, if, if those are continuous, continuously granted, then is that something that, you know, the bylaw should be changed? So, you know, if, if, you, if, if they've been applied for, for, you know, 10 years and the ZBA uh, grants this use variance, well, then I guess it's okay for that particular zone. You know, I mean, so you, you, so you gotta, you know, there's gonna be some, um, I mean, with any bylaw, but, you know, we, we gotta do some back research yeah, this. I know you did that big spreadsheet for us before. And at the time, I think the biggest variance or the most frequently granted variance was related to like a dimensional, like a sign or something. Probably, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if the data, you know, obviously I don't want to look at a spreadsheet that's a couple of years old, but do you think that we've trended in the same path? Like we're looking at mostly dimensional variances over uses or have I, you, heard, I, just anecdotally? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's, you know, a dimensional variance, I mean, that's, that's what a variance is all about. You know, that's different than a use variance. Mm -hmm. a, a, you know, a use variance is, is just that. It's about a mm -hmm. use. Um, so, I mean, dimensional variances, that's, that's, that's something that's at, 
you know, just about every single DBA meeting as someone is seeking right. a, a, some sort of dimensional setback um, a variance. But I'm just saying in the, in the big picture, you know, if you, if you want to be talking about use variances, um, you, you know, part, part of looking, you know, historically, you know, what, what has been granted um, and then, you know, taking a look again at the use table of like, okay, are, are there things on here that, um, that we have either prohibited in the past, but now maybe maybe people feel differently. You know, I mean, just like anything, obviously there's some research that has to go on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the best way to get access to that information? Is that like something that's like well, it's, track it's, of that? It, it's all in my office. <laughs> okay, should I just come in and peruse through your office? Or? <laughs> the, all these decisions are online. Um, if anyone okay. wants to do this for fun, but um, well, you I think know, we have up to a certain point covered anyway. So right. Yeah. And yeah. So the you know we've um, you know again like every single one of you you know there's there's so many things on the to do list and you know that can certainly be added if this is a priority of the boards um, and um, you know just. <laughs> No, I can actually, I don't mind looking. I can, I want to go back to that spreadsheet anyway, and then I'll look, the decisions are online. So I'll just look. And I think I, you know, over the last few years, kind of have a sense of what those use variants, actual use variances were. Yeah. And, and okay. again, they're not, like you were saying, Carrie, there's not, not a, I don't, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be surprised if, if my memory is, no, well, I won't be surprised if my memory fails me, but <laughs> I don't think there's been a lot of use variances that have been granted. Okay. Once that pop into my head, the use variances that are being asked for are on groundwater lately. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, especially, I mean, in groundwater one, they, yeah. if someone wants to pursue, if they've got property that's industrial and they have groundwater one, they, and they don't want to build a house, <laughs> you know, a single family house, um, then they, then that's their only option is to pursue a use variance on in area one. Okay. So does it take a long time for you to sort them and just because for me I tried to look up variances online and you have to go through them one by one I think yeah the, I do the same, I have to do the same thing you have to do the same yeah. thing we, we don't keep a tally you know of at, and add to it at, at every single meeting we you know we just we go to the case files and you know we have to put together a spreadsheet okay I just didn't know if there was an easier way <laughs> so so I don't mind doing that actually but what um that spreadsheet you sent us a while ago, I would you mind resending it? Do you have that handy somewhere? So then I can just take from that period of time or I must've saved it somewhere. Yeah, what? I mean, Carrie, you don't you don't have to do that. I mean, you know, I'm your staff. I mean, we can do that. I'm no, just, I don't mind actually. I would like, it, so it's fine. It's not a, it will, it'll be a fun project for me. I'm just trying to figure out if I have the, um, the that yeah, No, I can send it. I mean, I- it, Oh, okay. It, it has to be somewhere. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. All right, great. All right, so we have a little more research needed there. And I think that's it. Um, did I miss anything? Michelle, you don't have any bylaws up on the, on the table this year, right? I don't. Okay. <clears throat> did I catch everything? All right, so just um, things that are withdrawn at this point, um, historical district withdrawn dark skies and conversions only in downtown. And there may be additional coming from staff. Outdoor seating has been reconciled. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, any further discussion? Okay, we have um, the next, oops, I'm in the wrong agenda. The next planning board meeting is, October 19th, oh, okay. and then I had just sent out, if anyone caught it, I sent it out in the material from Amy, but I just added that um, there's no meeting on the second. Okay, great. And the ZBA meeting, is anything there that we need to? The, um, the I, I had sent out, I think it was just two applications. There's four applications. I think there's four hearings. One of them con was continued. Um, but the, um, one of the applications that I sent to you was, um, the address is 300 West Main Street and which is, you know, the, uh, an existing office, 
um, complex. And so someone, there's a nail, a nail academy, you know, fingernail um, uh, academy that a school that, that wants to, you know, t use some vacant space that's over there. So that's, um, and they're in a groundwater. Um, I think it's two or three. So they need to um, come uh, for a special permit regarding, you know, the products that they use. Any nail salon does actually. And then one of the other applications I sent to you, um, I'm drawing a blank. Um, King Street. Street. I'm sorry, what? King Street. Oh, oh, that's right. Yep, King Street is, um, that is a um, special permit that was granted, a special permit and some variances that was granted a couple of years ago for a, an assisted living facility. And the original application was for 66 units or, or beds, we called them units, but 66. And within the same square footage, the developer, because he now is going to hook up to town sewer, um, he wants to expand the number of um, units that he has to 88. And part of that is putting in a, um, a, um, a memory care facility. So, uh, because it's a it's a, it's a change in the decision because the decision from the ZBA was specifically written for 66 units, and he wants to change it to 88. So that's before the ZBA, and then um, uh, then there's a groundwater line uh, um, question coming in on um, Lawrence Street. Um, so that's for single family. I believe it's a single family house. And then the, the continued one was the 200 um, Bartlett Street, the Devereaux uh, Corporation, Devereaux Company, um, that will, if they, if they get their variance, if they receive a variance from the ZBA, you know, then they come to you um, for site plan review and special permit um, for the warehouse use. Contractor yard. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> A contractor yard, right? Oh, yeah, contractors. Yes, yes, yeah, contractors. <laughs> Warehouse on the brain, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I was just had a question on King Street. How do they go from, I didn't look at it, but how do they go from 66 to 88? Are they just making smaller units? I think something to do with the, the memory care units are smaller units. Um, and the first floor is is now what he's proposing as memory care. So yeah, I think I think it has to do, and the state regulates like how, like what's the square footage of these units, of each one of these units. Mm -hmm. So um, so he's able to increase the, the number, um, but you know, particularly because he's connecting to sewer. But the site plan doesn't change at all. No, he's not changing the, the site plan, the size of the building. Mm -hmm. um, we've asked him to do some parking calculations um, uh, even though, you know, memory care facility occupants don't have cars, um, but we've asked for, you know, revised parking calculations. Hmm. So. Okay, any further questions on that? All right, motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor, Millie? Aye. Anthony? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Amy? Oh, Amy, I can't hear you. Oops. Aye. And Carrie's an aye. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.